Yo, what up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something that you guys have been asking me to do for months and I'm finally able to get around and do it and that's play Falcon BMS and kind of show you how to get started inside of Falcon BMS because it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we're going to do that. If that sounds interesting to you, come on in. The water's fine. Let's learn Falcon BMS together. Before we get moving in Falcon BMS, there's a couple pieces of software that I think are going to make your experience so much better. The first one being Voice Attack. Now, Voice Attack is a paid piece of software. Right now, it's currently like $11.99, so $12 US. I know that might be a lot for some of you, but trust me, this program is going to change how you play Falcon. It's going to make it much more immersive, and I think you're going to have a ton of fun. So step number one, go get yourself Voice Attack. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to head over to veteransgaming.com and you're going to grab the AVCS core profile and the AVCS profile for Falcon 4. These are profiles for voice attack that make it really cool for you to be able to just say stuff like to fence in and your wingman will fence in. So it's pretty cool. It's super useful. So go ahead and go grab those profiles. They're free for voice attack over at veteransgaming.com. Okay, so obviously you're gonna need a copy of Falcon 4 and you can grab this on Steam or many other websites that exist out there. This is actually incredibly cheap. You get an amazing simulator for the cost of Falcon 4, which is $6.99 uh, currently, US dollars. So again, that might be a little higher or lower for you based on what your currency is, but you're gonna need a copy of just Falcon 4. You don't need this other stuff. You don't need Falcon. You don't need AT. You don't need gold. You don't need any of that. You just need Falcon 4. Once you have your copy of Falcon 4, you're going to head over to the Falcon BMS forums to grab the download for Falcon BMS. Read the installation guide and get all of this downloaded and ready to go. Now, here is the kicker. Before you do this, make sure you play Falcon 4 one time. All you gotta do is hit the play now button, let it load up so it creates the proper file path on your computer, and then you hit exit. You don't have to bind any keys, you don't have to do anything. Just start the game one time and one time only. After you start it, then you can use the Falcon BMS installer to get everything up and going. So this is gonna download that installer for you. You're gonna run that once you get it downloaded and that's gonna install Falcon BMS for you. Okay, you've made it this far, so things are going pretty well. Uh, this is the Falcon BMS launcher. I'm gonna give you a quick orientation of the launcher. If you see this on your screen, that means you have already ran Falcon 4 one time, right? You did it? If you didn't do it, go do it because you have to do it. So run Falcon 4 once and then come back here to the launcher. Now here is where everything you do configuration wise is gonna take place. So up here along the top, you have a couple options. You have an access assign. It does exactly what you think it does. This is where you're gonna bind things like your flight stick, your rudder pedals, your throttle quadrant, all that good stuff is gonna be bound here uh, in the access assign. If you have other peripherals, are other axes available or axes available to you, such as like the Win Wing MFDs and stuff like that? You can bind all of that up here under the ICP radios and altimeter section. And then ultimately, you can bind this. This is the field of view, which is more like a zoom for your pilot. Sometimes we like to zoom in and out so we can see what's going on uh, in the cockpit or read the instruments a little better. So you're going to want to bind that as well. The next spot. In the launcher is the key mapping section and it's exactly what it sounds like this is where you're actually going to map your keys you might be tempted to map your keys inside the game don't do that map them here in the launcher it's going to work out better for you it's easier to find things and it's going to be read in by the game anyway i understand this can be incredibly overwhelming so there's categories up here so you can just say oh like this is uh something that's on maybe the center console and you can toggle down here so now you can see things like the master arm switch and things like that you just double click these and a box comes up you press the button and it binds it it's pretty pretty simple you don't have to click into the column that you want to bind so i don't have to click here to bind something on the ufc i can actually click over here on this left side and then just press any input i want and it will know what device that input belongs to it's really nice if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can filter for it here. So I know that I actually need to bind my nose wheel steering button. I found this out last night. I did the fresh install of Falcon 4 for me. So I got to go ahead and, and fix up a few things. So you can come up here and just type NWS. So here's the nose wheel steering button. It looks like it's already bound. So, so maybe I did bind it. 
We're gonna go ahead and rebind it though, because I don't think it's correct. Yeah, so it was put somewhere else. So now I have two binds. So we're gonna go ahead and hit clear DX on that. DX is like the uh, keys that we've assigned. Clear key is like the keyboard keys that it assigns. So then I'm just gonna press the button on my joystick. I'm gonna hit save. And just like that, we've bound our nose wheel steering button. It's pretty helpful for me. Take some time, bind your keys, okay? Get it done. Once you're done, you should come back to this part of the video. You're back already? So soon? Perfect. The next section is, I know a lot of you guys like to play in VR. If you wanna launch this in VR, you can just select it down here. Like, hey, I wanna launch this in Steam VR and it's gonna spin because it's gonna to wanna to launch Steam VR on me right now. I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure Steam VR closes. That's not what I wanna do um, for this. So we're gonna go ahead and close Steam VR. I'm actually gonna hit no VR. That's how I prefer to play, but that's how you would select what you want if you're gonna launch Falcon 4 to play in VR mode. The next section is a couple command line options that are easy to select to launch. I suggest no movie. No movie's perfect. It means you don't have to watch that fucking intro movie every time you launch Falcon 4. It's really helpful. iFly is like this external camera that you can use. It's bad. It's not as good as the DCS external camera, but it's there for you if that's what you want to do. Down here, all of these are buttons and they're kind of important. So if there's an update to BMS, once you have it downloaded, you can just click this. It will launch the auto updater. It will download the latest updates and patch your version and you'll be good to play and perfectly fine. There's a lot of other stuff in here. There's config options. There's the client needed for multiplayer. Um, you can click into these and figure them out. I think you guys are pretty smart. The next section that matters though is this thing right here called Weapon Delivery Planner. Now this is really cool. If you do not have Weapon Delivery Planner installed, clicking this button will take you to the download page to download and install Weapon Delivery Planner. Weapon Delivery Planner is free. It is another piece of software that I suggest you install for Falcon BMS. Now, if you don't, you're gonna have a hard time following along with the way I play Falcon BMS, uh, but you can get by without it. If you do have it installed and you click it, it's pretty cool and it launches. It's gonna search for the Falcon BMS install. It's gonna load everything up and you get this really cool interface that we'll get to later in the video. I will say Weapon Delivery Planner is very extensive. It's a huge tool. We could spend hours talking about WDP, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you how I use it. What I do want to warn you about, the first time you load it up, you're probably going to get an error about a missing map. And that's because it supports different maps over here. But this top one uh, is selected and I don't have it installed. You probably won't have it installed. You can go get it from the community. Um, we do have Korea installed. So we're just going to hit Korea. It's going to reload everything. And WDP is going to be good to use and ready to go. With all that being said, the next step is to actually launch Falcon. Before we do that, if you want any of these other tools, same situation. If I click on this, it's going to say, hey, like, where do you want to install Mission Commander? And you select it and you'll be able to get Mission Commander. These are more tools made by the same people that made Weapon Delivery Planner. You can dig into them on your own. I don't have any of them installed. So we have Voice Attack running before we launch Falcon. We have WDP running before we launch Falcon, but you can start that whenever you'd like. And now we're going to launch Falcon 4. We just click the launch button and here we go. All right, so you're going to launch in the Falcon. Here you go. It's pretty dope. Now, there are things you should touch and there are things you shouldn't touch, mainly things in the setup. So if you click on setup, the one thing you don't want to touch is anything in this controllers tab. You did all of that in the launcher. And if you did it, go do it in the launcher. You don't need to touch anything here in this controllers tab. Now, what you might wanna to touch is things in this graphics tab. You might wanna crank up the quality to as good as your computer can handle it. This game is a little bit old. Admittedly, the graphics are an area of Falcon BMS where people are put off and don't wanna play the game. So do everything you can to make this look good for you. The next tab and, and the one that I typically mess with the most is things in sounds. Now you might wanna turn off UI radio chatter. When you go into a campaign, you hear all the radio conversations. Even when you're not in the aircraft, it can be really annoying. So you might wanna turn that off. And I always turn the music down. It's real loud if you don't, so I always turn that down. You can adjust the audio however the hell you want. It don't matter to me. These are just my settings. The next pane that matters to you is probably the simulation pane. This just kind of sets the realism of the flight model that you're gonna have. So you can come into here. If you put this on recruit, you'll see the flight model goes to easy. Air refueling goes to easy. All these things get taken care of for you. You also get all these assists turned on. So 
you can fly it however you want if you're struggling on ace then uh turn it down it's there's no shame in flying with these assists as you learn how to play this game uh, i'm gonna leave mine on ace obviously when you're all done you hit apply then you hit okay okay next what are the different options in falcon bms first you have this instant action tab instant action is super duper cool all you're doing in instant action is chasing a score you can see some of my scores here um, this was me like rebinding my keys when I reinstalled this yesterday. As you can see, Joe Pilot's not a real call sign, right? Um, you can get scored just by flying, so don't think that I did anything miraculous here. But I also was just messing around with keybinds. So what's really cool is you're chasing a score. It's like you fighting against yourself to see the highest score you can get. You can select between fighter sweep and moving mud. Fighter sweep is like this endless wave of fighters that you get to take out and you can set their difficulty. And then you can decide if you wanna to have to dodge SAMs and AIA sites uh, along the way. When you're ready to fly, you hit commit and guess what? You end up in the jet and you're good to go. It's pretty cool. That's like a perfect mode if all you have is like 10 or 15 minutes. The next mode is dogfight. This allows you to set up uh, more structured engagements for you to be able to dogfight. And uh, if you wanna fight against your friends, this is a good way to do it too. The next thing up here is tactical engagements. If you're brand new to Falcon BMS, there is a manual. It's located in the docs folder for Falcon BMS. The manual is a PDF. You're gonna do a lot of reading, but each chapter in the manual is assigned a training mission. You can see TR stands for training, BMS, one so chapter one covers ground ops you go read chapter one in the manual you come into the tactical engagement page you click on ground ops you hit commit and you fly that mission in accordance to what is outlined in the manual that is how you do training in falcon bms there are no guided missions that kind of help you do stuff it's grab the pdf for the chapter or for the mission that you're going to do and fly it so if you want to dig into IAM, then you do that here. If you want to dig into Mavericks, you do that in this mission. And 13 corresponds to the chapter in the training manual. If you want to build your own mission so that you can fuck around and find out, the tactical engagement builders right here. These are just one-off standalone missions not tied to anything. All right, the next tab on this page and really the last one that we're going to talk about is the campaign. And that's where we're going to go. We're going to go ahead and jump into the campaign. We're going to start a brand new campaign. We're going to talk about the campaign and then we will fly a mission in the next video that we plan right here. So here's the thing about BMS is that planning is the game. Flying is very little of the game. Planning is what matters. So we open the campaign menu and we're greeted with this. There are multiple campaigns here on the left. Tiger Spirit, Rolling Fire, Iron Fortress, Double Dragon. You can read, you get the point. Each one of these is a campaign, a self-contained campaign with different win conditions in its own. Every time you run these campaigns, it is a dynamic world. Everything is new. Everything is different for the most part. What you do early in the campaign will dictate what happens later in the campaign. All campaigns, like if I run Tiger Spirit over and over, like if I run it 10 times, it's going to start the same way. 10 different times but after a couple missions i have shaped the battlefield much differently than i have in the other 10 runs how do you know which mission you want to run well you can look over here and this one says difficulty is easy now that's not the skill of the ai that is the difficulty of the win conditions of the campaign itself so if we click on rolling fire it's medium if we click on iron fortress it's hard double dragon medium bear trap impossible mantis at dawn depending on which side you choose to fight on changes how difficult it is another thing you can look at is how long the campaign is and this one is five days long and you might think to yourself five days that's not enough flying but the reality is you're gonna get about 10 to 12 flights in every day of the campaign so a five-day campaign is probably around 50 to 70 flights somewhere in there depending on how you book your packages and we'll talk about that in a minute so that's a lot of missions for you to complete a campaign the next thing up here is who you're gonna fly for in this case the 14th fighter squadron out of Gimpo International Airport is flying the block 50 f-16s 
if we look at the 67th fighter squadron, they are flying F-15 Cs. Okay, if we come down to this campaign, the 36th fighter squadron is flying Block 40 F-16s. The 25th is flying A-10 Cs, and the 5th is flying U-2s. Okay, we're gonna fly the F-16. We're actually gonna choose Tiger Spirit. We're gonna fly the F-16, the Block 50, and everything is gonna be good to go for us. Now, if you're finding the AI skill to be too steep for you, right here at the challenge rating is where you change it. Click on cadet and you can come over here and change the skill. I'm gonna leave it on cadet, that's the default, but only because I'm gonna be doing a bunch of talking and bullshit during the campaign. Uh, and I don't wanna have to focus so much if I'm talking and creating content. So we're gonna leave that there. You can do all this stuff if you want, but this is what the default looks like. I kinda also want you to see what the default options are. That way you're not overwhelmed with decision fatigue and you can just hit next, 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 next and get in the air and fly. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select the 14th fighter squadron. We're gonna fly block 50 F-16s. We are ready. So let's go ahead and hit commit. All right, congratulations. You are now kicking off a campaign inside of Falcon BMS. These are target priorities. This dictates how the, the campaign is gonna structure missions based on what you're trying to take out. So in this case, airfields and air defenses are of high priority, whereas logistics are of low priority. So that means early on, we're gonna get a lot more seed and deed flights and less like strikes and stuff like that, right? So, and very little naval unit stuff. So you can adjust this if you want. The default is set by HQ. So we're gonna leave it there. You can come in here, change the mission type, same shit. It's just a different way of setting the priorities. We're gonna let HQ manage this. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna hit okay. The next button is the most important button. We hit okay, we're gonna start the campaign. Bam, the campaign is now running. The simulation is running. We can see that right here. It's six seconds, seven seconds in. We can also see that some packages are starting to populate, okay? These packages leave a little later. They leave at 328. It is currently one zero zero. So these packages leave in like two hours, okay? Which is perfect. It gives us time to talk about things. You'll notice nothing is happening here. Not a goddamn thing is taking place in this mission right now. And that's because tasking hasn't fully taken effect yet. As time goes on, we will start to see the units on this map moving. You've probably heard that BMS is unique to the point where you don't actually have to fly. We could run this whole campaign right here from the 2D map, but what's the fun in that? So we got seed, we got deed, we got deed. These are all different packages that we can pick. Um, if we click on a different package, we'll see a different flight path for this. So you can see here, all of these are just the waypoints that we're gonna follow along the way. Waypoint 10, waypoint two, we can move it around if we want and just click and drag all that good stuff and it flies all the way out here to waypoint seven and it bombs this area okay it performs a destruction of enemy air defense in this area if this is the mission you want that's fine let's go ahead we come back over here this is hawkeye seven mission package is 2208 this package number will matter and we assign ourselves a seat now if we come back up to this top one we no longer have a seat up here. You'll notice we don't have a wingman yet. He will get assigned to us later when we're closer to takeoff. All right, let's get closer to takeoff. To do that, we're actually gonna set up the simulation to run at 64 times. So takeoff for this is 409. You can see earlier missions are being assigned, right? And they're gonna start running. We should see units at any moment start moving on the map so there you go here's air units flying around the enemy is going to fly around but we can't see them or we don't know what they're doing because we don't know what they're doing right like the enemy is making their movements once we get the intel we will get information on that we're going to let this run even more if you jump into a mission super 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 early you're actually going to run into an issue where you might just get taken out completely uh, because there's no escorts in the air so I like to fly missions a little bit later. You can see things are going crazy. So let's actually turn this back to one time and see if maybe there's a better seed or deed flight into this area. And this one here leaves at 342, which is a little bit sooner. So that one actually might be a little better for us to take. So we're gonna reassign ourselves here. Now, that leaves in about an hour and 40-ish minutes. So I wanna fast forward this 
until about 2.40, right? I want about an hour to do my prep and get in the jet. Okay, this is close enough for me. It's 2.45. So now we need to plan our mission. And this is where the better planning we do, the easier the mission goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up some pre-planned threat steer points. So I'm going to move number seven off just so I can see this better. I'm going to right click this red box and I'm going to hit recon. Now this page is going to pop up. And this actually shows me that the first air defense battalion exists at this location. And I can see the assets right here. We can go ahead and, and wiggle this all around and see what's up. We can see that there's trucks on the ground. I know they're a little bit hard to see. That's the amazing graphics of Falcon BMS at work. It is what it is. Uh, but we can see them right there. And we can see some of these things aren't mobile. But some of these things are mobile. So that's something to keep in mind, depending on the type of munitions you're going to take with you. So we're going to actually set up target steer points, which means we can designate different steer points as target steer points. But what we see here on our flight path is that we have all the way through waypoint 10 at a minimum taken up. And really, it's like 11. So all the way through waypoint 11 is already in use for our navigation. So we don't want to pick anything before 11 so i'm actually going to go ahead and come over to 99 it's hard to mess up and now i'm going to pick a thing that should not move and these sa3s shouldn't be moving they're not mobile and if i want to know more about an sa3 i'll show you in a minute how you can find that information so i'm going to pick this sa3 and then i'm going to hit this accept button right here that just stored the GPS coordinates for this SA-3 as steer point 99. So I'm going to come to 98. I'm going to do this and I'm going to hit accept. I'm going to come to 97. SA-3, accept. 96. SA-3, accept. 95. There's a low blow here. Not really the most mobile. This is very mobile. Um, if we come down, flat face, kind of mobile, right? SA-14. Probably not that mobile. We're going to hit accept. That's four targets. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to drop our bombs in pairs. We're going to carry eight GBU-39 small diameter bombs. We're going to drop them in pairs and hopefully it does all the damage we need it to do to this. And then we're going to leave our wingman to take harms and hopefully take out the low blow and the flat face so that we can't get shot at. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So once you have all that, you can go ahead and close this. Now what's cool is if we open a data cartridge, don't get overwhelmed by this, and we set steer point 99, you'll see we actually have GPS coordinates here, okay? We'll get back to that in a minute. Remember when I said we can find out information about an SA-3? There's this thing called the tactical reference, all right? The tactical reference actually lets us search up anything. So I can say vehicles, SAM sites, I can come here, SA-3, and I can find all the information about an SA-3. I can learn everything I need to learn about an SA-3. I can even know what an SA-3 sounds like by clicking this button down here. So that's what it sounds like when the SA-3 is tracking us on our RWR. They all sound a little different. Here's an SA-9. Sorry, that has no radar. Um, maybe SA-15. Sounds a little different on the RWR. So this will help you figure out what things sound like for you. But you can also get all kinds of information about your own munition. So I'm going to say bombs. We are taking uh, GPS guided bombs. We are taking GBU-39 small diameter bombs. You can get all the information about these to include the fact that they got a 60 nautical mile range. That's huge. That's huge. But we also know that they can have guidance from INS, the Inertial Navigation System. That's our target steer points. That's what we're going to use to launch these. These things are super duper easy to use. So I'm going to show you that. Before we go any further, I'm actually going to halt the simulation so that time stops ticking so that we can talk a little bit about how to set this up. So we know there's SA-3s here. Let's figure out how to set up a threat ring so we'll see it on our HSD so we know what the attack range of those SA-3s is. To do that, I right click anywhere on the map and I say set pre-planned threat steer point. When I do that, I get this green little box right here. If I left click that green little box, this comes up and I can say, hey, 
that's actually an SA3 site, right? And if I hit accept, this red ring just now showed up over that and I can drag this back to my target, just like that. And now my HSD in the Viper will reference that circle. I'll be able to see that circle. We can even do stuff like draw the front lines with other lines and, and all sorts of stuff. So if we said, hey, come here, let's set a steer point line and then we moved that around, right? If we click this though, we should be able to say additional steer point to line. Look at that. And we can start drawing. So we could say right about here feels like the front line, right? This feels like where, where things might end up. So let's actually set this here. We'll go ahead and set this here. And we're like, okay, the front line's probably like right through here. We can even add an additional steer point and all of this will show up on the hsd for us so that's an airfield for them so let's go ahead and add one more so we're going to say hey this is this feels like the front line it's probably not accurate but it feels like the front line we can kind of maybe bow this down just a little bit it feels a little bit like the front line and that type of thing will show up on our HSD for us. It's kind of just helpful. You don't have to do it. It's just situational awareness. All of that seems like a lot. We have two more steps, then we're ready to fly. First, we're gonna set our loadout. Our loadout has us selected as well as this unassigned wingman. We're gonna click that because we don't wanna change his loadout. He's gonna take horns. He's gonna fire at radar. We're taking bombs. Everything is different. So I'm actually gonna take the harms off the jet I'm gonna take the harm targeting system off the jet. I'm going to leave the jammer and the jamming system, the ALQ-184 ECMs. I'm gonna leave that. And then I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna say air to ground. I'm gonna scroll down until I find GBU-39, smaller than I am in our bombs. And I'm gonna click this. And you see that green dot? That means one bomb is on the jet. Now there's two, now there's three, now there's four. So we can carry four, this is why we have four pre-planned steer points if we want to fire less than two bombs per target we could actually target eight different sites but we're going to launch two per target and just try to cause a little bit of problems uh to the area around the sites that we have since they are all bunched up we might actually get lucky and get some kills that way so we're going to set that and honestly i'm going to take a targeting pod i'm going to take a sniper pod so that's going to be my loadout i haven't changed the wingman's loadout if I click on loadout, you'll still see that there are other things selected. That's okay. We can come in here and we hit okay. And that has changed our loadout. If we open that back up, we can see now we got bombs. We got all this good stuff. The next thing we need to do is set up the data cartridge. So basically we're just gonna go to every tab. We're gonna hit save really quick. So EWS, we're gonna hit save. This is your electronic countermeasures or just really your, your countermeasures as a whole. So you can change the different programs. Uh, to drop different quantities of chaff and flare and all that fun stuff. So program four, a two burst um, of different quantities for chaff and a sequence of two different bursts for flares. And you can change the timing. You can get really fine grained with all of this. So if we said three, that's two and four on chaff and that's one and one on flare. So it's kind of what it looks like. Five is like the bypass, so that's one in one of everything. It's up to you how to set those how you want. Um, you can change these programs in the jet. So program one is a little bit heavy on the chaff and a little bit light on the flare. It is what it is. So we'll hit save. We'll come to MFDs. You can change the layout on your MFDs. We'll hit save. We can come over to com. We press com plan. We hit save. IFF, IFF plan, we hit save. Link 16. Link 16, we hit save. All right, harm, we hit save. Now that we've done that, we need to get all of that information into weapons delivery planner. And I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not, okay? Let's go get all that information into weapons delivery planner. We're gonna hit save. We're gonna choose a name. I'm gonna call mine camp one, and we're gonna hit save. And I'm gonna replace mine. Once you've done that, you're gonna come to weapon delivery planner. Now that you're in weapon delivery planner, you're gonna hit file, you're gonna hit open mission. In here, you'll see all the campaign saves you might have. We named ours Camp 1. It's really easy to find. We hit open, and it's going to load this information into the data card. Now, what's cool about this is this is actually going to become our kneeboard. What we need before we do that, though, is our information over here about our flight. 
So we can see that our package is 2270 and our call sign is Gamble1. That is important information for us. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna search that right here. 2270, we're gonna hit find. And right here in this package is Gamble1. So we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna get this warning. And he says, hey, did you set up precision steer points? And you're damn right we did. So we're gonna hit yes. It's gonna load all this information. Look, it just populated all of this in the data card for us. So we know where we're flying out of. We got all the radio frequencies. We know our call sign. We know what our escort is, or sorry, their deed. They're not even an escort for us. We got all this information about our bombs. We have all these threat rings that are gonna be populated for us based on the map. We can click it to change what it looks like. And we have an entire flight plan over here on what time we need to hit targets, uh, the distance to each waypoint, uh, the speed we need to go, and the altitude that we need to fly at, right? So it's all right here. Now, you can do a whole lot more with this. We don't have to. What we're going to actually do is just click Update Kneeboard. We're going to click Set Default. It's going to populate our kneeboard with this handy-dandy, super cool thing. We're going to hit Save. It's going to spin for a second. It's going to appear as though it's broken, and then it's going to say kneeboard has been saved. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to come back to Falcon 4. That's it. That's all we're going to do with WDP, and our kneeboards are going to now look a little bit different. It's going to be nice. Okay. So that being said, we've done our click dance. We've done everything. We can go ahead and turn this back to 1, and we are ready to fly this mission. All right. The next thing we have to do is actually just click takeoff, and we'll be good to go. So in the next video, that's what we're going to pick up. We're going to hit takeoff and we're going to fly campaign mission one. I hope this helped get you set up and ready to go for Falcon BMS. Um, I hope it demystified some of the tooling that you need downloaded. Uh, remember, run voice attack, run WDP, um, and then fire up Falcon after that. Make sure your keybinds are good to go from the launcher and start your campaign. I know this seemed like a lot of planning. It's going to make the mission go by really easy. Before we end, though, let's talk real quick about right, the briefing. Up. The briefing is really important. It's actually quite detailed. But what I want to point out is the comms ladder. Comms in Falcon BMS are critical. And not only are they critical, they're well built. So there is an entire comm ladder here. So we can see that on UHF, channel 15 is this frequency, 274625. That is our intra-flight frequency. When we're talking to our wingman, we're transmitting on UHF channel 15. Okay. If we come down here or over here, same thing. VHF channel 15 is going to allow us to communicate with our wingman. We don't have to memorize the radio frequency. Just know the channel. Now, the way it typically works is it's going to be channel one is skipped. So you're going to start at two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, right? That's how you're going to land. Pretty easy. You can also count up two three four five six we skip seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i think whatever it might be right and that'll get you to the same channels okay so here you go base ops is on channel one we don't really use channel one uh, ground departure is on channel two we're gonna need that Gr departure tower is on channel three we're also gonna need that so we're gonna have to progress through the comms in order to get shit done. So we're gonna request taxi, we're gonna request takeoff, and each of these are different comm channels. We're actually gonna have to listen to the ATC. The ATC might say, hey, contact departure on 363800. We know that's channel four, but we contact departure and we report that we're airborne. It's pretty cool, um, lots of stuff going on for there. That's what you're gonna use voice attack for. So make sure voice attack's running. Um, so that's the last little bit. Uh, we're going to click take off in the next video and we're going to fly this thing. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Like the video. You want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel, stick around. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.